Because the behavior of a race takes on its specific character from its underlying images, we can speak of an archetype, Wotan. Wotan is an archetype of the Germanic collective unconscious. According to Jung, in explaining the influence of psychic forms on humanity, he identified a peculiarity with this Germanic archetype and the rise of nationalism among the German people in the late 19th and early 20th century. It is known that repression causes mental illness, but repression on a grander scale with civilization and country acts the same. If these complexes are continuously repressed and not identified or integrated into consciousness, they then manifest in other unhealthy ways. A union explanation of repression is that the things that are repressed are those that undermine our image of ourselves if we remembered them. The Germanics, having been Christian folk for centuries, were required to repress their ancestral heathenism, therefore causing Wotan to become an archetype of the shadow of their collective unconscious, but continuing to exist. This repression was caused by the Industrial Revolution, migration and urbanization of all of Europe and Western civilization. After 1871, which was the union of the German state, Germanic tradition came arise and was represented through German nationalism, folkish culture and Germanic mystic tradition. This was all representative of the Wotan archetype coming back into consciousness among the German people. This then extended by greater lengths into National Socialism, World War II and the worshipping of Hitler. Jung had observed that in Germany it, I quote, is that an ancient god of storm and frenzy, the long quiescent Wotan that should awake like an extinct volcano, and so it did. To Jung, this was of extremely obscure phenomena in understanding the sudden leap in transformation of the Germans under Hitler. As I quote from Jung, when, for instance, belief in the god Wotan vanished and nobody thought of him anymore, the phenomenon originally called Wotan remained. Nothing changed but his name. As National Socialism has demonstrated on a grand scale, a collective movement consists of millions of individuals, each of whom shows the symptoms of Wotanism and proves thereby that Wotan in reality never died, but has remained his original vitality and autonomy. By a denazification after World War II, the archetype of Wotan, already been wrongfully merged with the destructive acts of evil, bellowed back into repression into the collective unconscious of the nation. But this was not to state that Wotan equates to National Socialism or mass destruction via fascism. From earliest times, Wotan was called Odin and was a war god. He appeared in heroic literature, fallen warriors joined him in Valhalla. The wolf and the raven were dedicated to him. He was also the god of poets. In outward appearance, he was a tall old man with a flowing beard and only one eye, and with the other he gave in exchange for wisdom. He was usually depicted wearing a cloak and hat and carrying a spear, being highly associated with wisdom, healing, death, royalty, knowledge, war, battle, and poetry. He was not just a ruthless warlord, but one that held great wisdom. Strangely enough, Carl Jung identified Wotan in Nietzsche's writing. Jung saw the Wotan archetype in Nietzsche's Zarathustra. Jung saw this as Nietzsche unconsciously writing under the influence of this hidden mythological archetypal figure. Nietzsche's case is certainly a peculiar one. He had no knowledge of Germanic literature, but Zarathustra too was a soothsayer, magician and stormwind. And with Thus Spake Zarathustra being released in 1885, Jung saw it as acting similar to an unconscious catalyst for such an archetype to rise up within the German people. Jung quotes from Nietzsche's Zarathustra to show the similar nature between the two, drawing specifically on these figures as creators of storm, as I quote, And like a wind shall I come to blow among them, and with my spirit shall take away the breath of their spirit, thus my future wills it. Truly a storm wind is Zarathustra, to all that are low, and this counsel give he to his enemies, and to all that spit and spew, beware of spitting against the wind." End quote. Jung didn't just see this archetype as a ruthless warlord. As I have explained, there are more elements to its being. The times in which its repressed existence rose up and out of the German people caused war and devastation due to political tension and cultural shift in the time that it occurred. The archetype's wisdom was lost in the evil that engulfed it. As I quote from Jung, If we apply our admittedly peculiar point of view consistently, we are driven to conclude that Wotan must, in time, 
reveal not only the restless, violent, stormy side of his character, but also his ecstatic and mantic qualities. A very different aspect of his nature. If this conclusion is correct, National Socialism would not be the last word." End quote. Wotan he saw still has the potential to demonstrate something better than what it manifested into in the 20th century. Its spiritual wisdom was not paired with its strength and ability, thus no spiritual guide could direct the powers of Wotan towards true divination. Jung saw that the West was faced by many problems, technology, materialistic views, and the lack of individuality. But the path made by this rising did not guide the West towards a more healthy future. If you enjoyed this video and found it interesting to see Jung's view on the rise of National Socialism and thus Hitler, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. You can find the full essay written by Jung online if you are interested in digging a bit deeper. I will put a link in the description below. Thanks for watching.